Jankali Rupa Sharna Dharata Thambraja Prema Mahani Kona Kupatukka If Sri Rupa Goswami Pad had not appeared in this world, then who would have been able to access the treasure that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had brought here from Goloka Vrindavan? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came here with the Mahanidhi, the greatest treasure of divine love, but it was in a treasure chest and it was locked. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left the key with Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami opened it and then began to distribute. How? Nirkira hangs in a pound of a day at the corner of a kori payata. Just as a swan can separate milk from a mixture of milk and water, so similarly, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad, he could separate the pure bhakti, shuddha bhakti, uttama bhakti, from karma mishra bhakti, jnana mishra bhakti, yoga mishra bhakti, all the various impure types of bhakti. He, and then within that uttam bhakti, he could separate vaidhi bhakti, from Raganuga Bhakti, in other words, the Bhakti which is performed inspired by the injunctions of the scriptures, rules and regulations for the sake of attaining devotion to Vaikuntanath, Lakshmi Pati, the all powerful Bhagavan with three opulences in Vaikuntha. Mm -hmm. And he separated from that and showed what is the path of Raganuga Bhakti following the rag, the bars of the bridge buses to attain a love for sweet, beautiful human like Krishna in Vrindavan. And then within that love for Krishna in Vrindavan, he separated Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsali and Madhurya, five types of rasas and seven types of Gona rasas, Hasya, Bhuta, Virya, Karuna, Rhoda, Vibhaka, Sabaya, Pancha, Beda, Bhakti, Sapta, Gona, Rasa, Hai, the Hasya, Comedy, Adabhut, astonishment, virya, shivuri, karuna, the pathos, compassion, the pathetic mood, rodra, anger, vibats, disgust and fear, all the seven secondary rasas. Not only that, he showed the difference between sadhana bhakti, practice, bhav bhakti, in a state of uh, ecstasy, realizing your swarup in this world, and then prema bhakti, when we leave this world and enter Krishna's Leela. Then he, like a swan can separate milk from water, he looked at Prem, great ocean of Prema Rasa, Bhakti Rasa Amrita Sindhu, and he distilled the different levels of Prem, Prem, Sneha, Man, Pranaya, Rag, Anurag, Bhav, Mahabhav, Rudabhav, Adirudabhav, Mohan, Moda, and Madanakya Mahabhav, all these stages of Prem, and all of their symptoms. So if Rupa Baswami had not come into this world, who would have done it? Kona Pratak Kori Payata. Who could have? If you come in this Gaudiya line and you begin to hear these things, it's quite amazing. But it's even more amazing if you compare with the other Sampradayas. They have a completely different conception, even if they're worshipping Radha and Krishna. Because Rupa Goswami is also separated within Maduras, Swakya and Parakya. It's one thing to love Krishna thinking that Krishna is married to the gopis or married to Radharani and they all live happily in their home together in Nandagal and it's a completely another Leela, completely different. If Krishna is living in Nandagal and Radharani after living in Varsana gets married to a gop, another coward boy in Yavat and now they, it's completely, they cannot meet, it's completely illegal. It would be scandalous if they would ever come together in any way. So now their love has to be completely secret. This is the Parakya Rasa. Rupa Goswami has distinguished. Hmm? If you go to another Sampradaya, like Valabi Sampradaya, then you'll say, Kahu Sarkir pa, Kahu Parakya hmm? Kalahahi Matavadi Jori Ras, Bhagavata Rasika Ki Nitya Ananta Anadi Some people talk about Swaki and Parakya but they're all quarreling with each other. As far as I am concerned, my Radha Krishna, Nitta Ananta Anadi, 
eternally with no beginning and no end. They're just together in the kunj. So in Vrindavan, many are worshipping Radha Krishna as the Nitya Nikunja Lila. That means no Balaram, no Coward Boys, no Madhya Shoda, no Nanda Baba, hmm? no the Gochan Lila or anything. Only Radha Krishna in the kunj and some Sakis are there forever. It's not very Naravat, it's not very human-like. Hmm? Because every human being has a mother and father, family, and some relation with society. Huh? And those, and for Rupa Goswami, all of those things, they are the Rasupaka, they contribute to the intensity of Radha Krishna's love. Because another thing Rupa Goswami has revealed that others have not revealed in any other Sampradaya, he was empowered by Chaitanya Mapu to manifest the speciality of Vipralamba Bhav, separation. If Radha Krishna are eternally together in the Kunj and there's no separation, huh? then the actual intensity of meeting cannot be nourished to the highest point. So Rupa Goswami not only described uh, meeting but also separation and different types of separation. Hmm? Like Purvarag, Man, by, uh, praying by Chitta, Pravas, Sudirga Pravas. And then the meetings that take place after different types of separation are also different varieties of meeting as well. Hmm? So, for, for example, Purvarag means the separation from Krishna when one has fallen in love with him but didn't get a chance to meet very closely with him. Yet. So the verses of Vainu Gita are there. Gopis are thinking, oh, I am not so fortunate. Krishna is going out into the forest. The birds are, they have brain because the birds are following, the cows are following, the cows are praying. Even the trees are playing with him. He's climbing on the trees. He's swimming in the river. All are lucky except for me. I am so unlucky. I don't have brain. This is Purvarag. If meeting will take place after Purvarag, then how will it be? Uh, we were discussing this. First time Krishna met with Radharani, he sat down next to her. And uh, she was very shy. Hmm? This is the meeting after Purvarag is called the Sankship Sambhog. The meeting is uh, somewhat, um, how can we say, abridged. It's a shortened <laughs> type of meeting. All the qualities of the meeting are not fully manifest. So Krishna sat next to Radharani and he began to say some joking words but Radharani was so feeling so much shyness she didn't laugh at his jokes. <laughs> Krishna tried to put his arm on her shoulder she went like this. Krishna tried to kiss her and she put a veil over her head and turned away. So the first meeting of Radha Krishna it was a disaster. <laughs> but when Krishna was leaving yes he was so happy, he thought it was a great success. <laughs> so this is one type of meeting, it's different. So they're all different varieties of meeting. If, if Krishna will meet with Radharani and she's in Maan, she's upset with him because perhaps he met with another gopi, then this meeting, we were mentioned a few days ago, it's like a tapta ikshu, hot sugar cane juice. She still feels some burning of jealousy, but at the same time, Krishna is so sweet, she cannot reject him anymore. Hmm? So, there are different types of meeting. Hmm? If Krishna will go away to Mathura or Dwarka and then come back, the meeting that takes place after long separation is very intense. Some Riddhiman Sambhog. So, Srila Rupa Goswami, he is like the swan, and he could separate not just one or two. Uh, type of love, one lila in one place, that means the at whole sampradaya is only matramai upasana. And uh, two days ago we were saying, what was the Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam? On the one side to reveal the glories of Radhika's Mahabhav to the world, and on the other side to give to the people Kevala Madhurya Mai Swarasiki Upasana. Swarasiku Upasana, not serving in one leader in one kunj in one place, but going from Nandagal, Yava to Nandagal, Nandagal back to Yava, from Yava to Govardhan, Govardhan to Radhakun, like this, from, play, from Radhakun to Suryakun, from place to place, spontaneously flowing in the heart like television. This is the Swarasiki Upasana. So, Rupa Goswami, distinguished between all of these things, it's quite incredible. If you make a comparison, uh, the, the great uh, treasure, Tanubraja Prema Mahadvi Vikuta Gika, 
There are many saints in Braj. They have praying, they have realization. But they could not open the treasure that Mahaprabhu came to give. The key was with Rupa Goswami. And unless and until we surrender ourselves fully and become immersed in the Vichar Dhara, that means the current of the conception of Rupa Goswami, then we won't know why Mahaprabhu came. This is the thing. And uh, also we give a little uh, caution at the bottom of the page, a little footnote there. My Gurudev used to say that if you don't try to go deeply into the nuances, into the mysteries, into the various revelations which are there in the Vichadara of Rupa Goswami, in the current of his conception, after some time, Maya will say, Cuckoo, hello, and you'll be... She will, Maya will attract you and you will go into Maya and then Bhakti will become mixed with various things. You can become a lukewarm devotee. Hmm? Even the Christian saints say the worst enemy of spiritual life is lukewarmness. Uh -huh. That is, in, in spiritual life we have to be on fire. We have to be on fire. Of course that comes by mercy, not by our effort. But our enthusiasm should be fiery at least, to try and to appreciate the descent of that grace. So don't be lukewarm. But if you don't become lost in the revelations of Rupa Goswami, for sure after some time, you'll think, ah, oh, yeah, I know about Bhakti. Some complacency will come and you'll go out into Maya. And if you're already there in Maya, this is the reason. So now come back into the Vichadara, the current, flowing current of Rupa Goswami's conception. So here it's saying, Jabapita Bampula Palata Nanabida Mananaji Aravinda. In the forest there are many flowers. But if you try to eat the flowers, you cannot understand what sweetness is in them. Only if a bumblebee will come and take the nectar from the flowers and make it into honey, then you can taste it. So in the same way, oh all the Shastras, the Puranas, and especially Srimad Bhagavatam. It is uh, full of, each verse of Sriman Bhagavatam is like a very beautiful flower, full of honey. But who can taste it? Rupa Goswami came there like a bumblebee, extracted the essence of Srimad Bhagavatam and made it into honey and he's distributing through Raghunath Das Goswami, Srila Nartam Das Thakur, Srila Vishnam Thakur, Thakur, Srila Bhakti Nur Thakur. And come, this honey is coming, dripping in a... Guru Prampara Nigamakapataru Galitampaka Palam Shukamakut Amrita Drava Sam Drava means liquid flowing down. Pibat Bhagavatam. Drink this nectar of Shiman Bhagavatam Rasamalayam until you faint. And then when you wake up, Muhur! Drink it again and faint again. Muhur Aho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavokaha. In this world there are two types of people. Bhuvi means in this world. Rasika and Bhavok. Rasik means param rasik, those who have praying and those who are coming from the spiritual world. They are the eternal sources of Radha and Krishna. They are really rasik. And then they feed this guitar to those who are bhavuk. <laughs> those who have done sadhan and come to the stage of bhav and by their mercy from bhav they can attain this rasa as well. So, pipata bhavatam rasamalaham muhuraho rasika bhuvi bhavukaha Kojanata Maturara Vrindavana Kojanata Brajanita. If Rupa Goswami had not come to this world, then who would know Mathura Vrindavan, the difference between Mathura and Vrindavan? <coughs> What's the difference between Mathura and Vrindavan? It's the difference between two fingers. Nothing, they're side by side. Geographically, Mathura and Vrindavan are side by side. But from the perspective of Rasa, they are millions and millions of miles apart. This is why the residents of Braj, they never want to go to Mathura. And the residents of Mathura, they don't want to go to Braj. The mood is quite different. In what way is it different? Rupa Goswami has revealed it, especially in Lalit Madhav Nataka. Jagat Harne, Prasada Sakalaja Nagaya Gavai Sukhabhavat, all those who sing the glories of Rupa Goswami, and glorify his lotus feet. By his mercy, they relish extreme joy, extreme happiness. So the author, Madhav Das, is surrendering at the lotus feet of Rupa Goswami and loudly singing his glories. 
So this is our objective this evening to loudly sing the glories of Rupa Goswami and it may be that by his prasad, by his mercy, we can experience the Gai Gawai Sukabhavat, great transcendental happiness. Shila Rupa Goswami Pad. Now, where did we get to? Oh yes, when we were discussing the life history of Srila Rupa Goswami Pad. We discussed how he met with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first in Ram Kelly, then how he escaped from his government service and again met with Ch Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in, uh, in um, Prague, not in the Czech Republic, Prague. <laughs> but you should also come to Prague. Eh? Will you come to Prague? Yes. <laughs> he met with Rupa Goswami in Prayag and instructed him, Rup Shiksha, for about 10 days. Afterwards, Srila Rupa Goswami went to Vrindavan and then he came to Puri and again met with Mahaprabhu. He was in Jagannath Puri for about 10 or 11 months and then he went back to Vrindavan and he never physically had the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again. Always in Vrindavan. He was feeling separation from Mahaprabhu. But Mahaprabhu was Ridi yasya prairanaya pravati doham barak upi tasya hare parikamalam bande jaitanya devasya. Mahaprabhu was inspiring him to write each and every word of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Ujjwai Nilamani, to complete his dramas, Lalit Madhav, Vidagda Madhav, his poems, Tava Mala, Dan Kali, Komadi, and so on. Uh, so, in this way, he was connected to Mahaprabhu through that seva. Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Fulfilling Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's innermost heart's desire just as when you pluck the string of a tanpur in the center then the vibration goes to both ends simultaneously so in the same way the ecstasies that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was realizing he is realizing the moods of Radharani in the Gambira in Jagannath Puri at the same time those ecstasies are coming in the heart of Rupa Goswami because Priya Sarupe, Daita Sarupe, Prema Sarupe, Sahajabi Rupe, Prabhureka Rupe, Nijana Rupe, Prabhureka Rupe, Tatana Rupe, Swavila Sarupe. Rupa Goswami is one with the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He himself is the Vilas, the pastime of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, when Rupa Goswami was staying in Vrindavan, he was wondering here and there, and very much he liked to stay in that place, halfway between Yavat and Nandagal. It's called Terakadamba. So in Terakadamba, he was there writing his poetry. When he wrote about the separation of Radha and Krishna, he was weeping and the leaves and petals were falling from the trees in sympathy with Rupa Goswami. And then when he wrote about the meeting of Radha and Krishna, then the flowers would burst into bloom again on the trees. Srila Sanatana Goswami was doing Parakrama here and there, and one day he, he arrived at that place, Terakadamba, and Srila Rupa Goswami uh, considers his elder brother, Sanatana Goswami, his guru, and calls him Prabhupada. Everywhere in the writings of Rupa Goswami you see Srimad Prabhupada Ambuja Bhakti Siddhanta Amrita. My Prabhupada Sanatana Goswami has revealed all the Amrita of Bhakti Siddhanta through his Brihat Bhagavatam Amrita and so on. So, Srila mm, Rupa Goswami gave pranams to his Prabhupada <laughs> and seat and sweet words and they began discussing Harikata. Namagana Sadharuji always taste in the holy name and mm, uh, the Tadguna Kyane always a taste in describing the qualities and pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So Rupa and Sanatan they were having very beautiful Harikata together relishing Bhakti Rasa for a long time. And the, the thought came in the mind of Srila Rupa Goswami Oh my mm, Gurudev has come and I have nothing to offer him at all. So just then, one young girl came out from the village and, and said, oh, oh Baba, here's some milk and here's some sugar and some rice and some cardamom. You can make some kheer. And then she went away. 
But Rupa and Sanatan, they were so absorbed in the Harikata that they just uh, ignored that village girl who put the ingredients there. After some time, the village girl from far away, she was watching. But they didn't cook. Okay, I'll cook myself. So then she came and she took the ingredients. She took some dry leaves in her hand and she blew and fire appeared. And then she mixed them together. Very soon, in a moment, she made some kheer and came. Oh, Baba, here's, if you have no time to cook, take here's some kheer. And then she went away. But still, the Harikata was flowing like a river. Tasmin Mahan Mukarinam Marubits Charitra Piyusa Shesha Sarita Parita Sravanti. When the great souls speak Harikata, it's coming out like rivers flowing in all directions. So they were relishing. And then, after a long time, then Srila Rupa Goswami said, Oh, Prabhupada, there's some, can I offer you some gear? So he gave some gear to his brother. He said, you should take also. So they put it in some leaf cups. And then, and as soon as Sanatana Goswami and Rupa Goswami tasted that gear, their hairs were standing on end. They became stunned. They began to tremble. Tears were flowing from their eyes. And Srila Sanatana Goswami could realize a key could only be such amrita, such nectar it w if it were made by the lotus hands of Shimati Radhika herself. He turned to his brother. Hey Rup, <laughs> when we were discussing Harikata, did any other thought come in your mind? Rupa Goswami said, he admitted, actually I was thinking, you have come here but I had nothing to offer you. Sanatana Goswami said, Oh, when you hear Harikata, speak Harikata, don't have any other thought in your mind. Huh? What have you done? Now Radhika herself has come and cooked. What is the goal of our life? Do you want to be the Dasi of Radhika, the maidservant of Radhika? Or you want that Radhika should become your Dasi? And Sanatana Goswami chastised him. And Rupa Goswami very humbly accepted it. So then they ate that kia and they didn't wash their hands, they just... <laughs> <laughs> no need to wash if Radharani herself has got <laughs> You know that? See, Krishna has said, Ananyas chintayanto mam yei jana parya pasate teisham nityav yuktanam yoga kshemam baham yaham if someone is always thinking of me, one point is not thinking of anyone else or anything else and serving me in their heart, then whatever they have in their life, I maintain it. And if they need something, Krishna said, I personally bring it. That means, that means he doesn't make the Mahatatma move in such a way that it comes there. <laughs> or, he sends, or that he sends it through someone else, another devotee or something. No, Krishna himself, Shams Hundar, with the peacock fella, feather, hmm? Bangsiwala, that one, he personally comes and brings it himself. So, if someone is always thinking of Krishna and he has made that rat to maintain them, then what to speak of Radharani? Karunam Kurmai Karunabhari Sanaka Sanatana Vahadita Chari Karunam Kurumai Rupa Goswami said, Oh, Radhika, you are Karunamai, you are made of mercy. Radhika is not less merciful than Krishna. We can say more merciful, even. So if someone is Ananyas Chintayanto Radham, then definitely Yoga Kshemam Baham Yaham Radharani herself will come and bring whatever they need and Rupa Goswami is the example here. Hmm? One other confidential tattoo I want to tell in this regard is that Sanatana Goswami is the incarnation of Labanga Manjri and she was a little disturbed that uh, though we are dasis of Radhika but Radhika has served us but Rupa Manjri is so intimate to Shimati Radharani hmm? Radharani considers her to be her own body she has no shyness in front of her whatsoever. And Rupa Manjari is so close that if sometimes Radhika will serve her, it's okay. 
So Dong Rupa Goswami very humbly accepted the chastisement of Sanatan Goswami, but in his heart he thought, <laughs> not so bad. He accepted the chastisement to teach us, but Rupa Manjari is the chief of all uh, the Manjaris. Just as Ananya Chinmaya Rasa Pratipa Vitabis Tabiya Aja Nija Rupa Taya Kalabi, all the gopis, they are the Kala. The expansions of Radharani. So in the same way, all the manjaris, they are the ex bodily expansions of Rupa Manjari. And therefore we are Rupa Nuga. The followers of Rupa. Rupa Goswami outwardly in Sadak form and Rupa Manjari inwardly in the Siddha form. There are many sweet pastimes with Rupa Goswami and his Guru, his Prabhupada, Sanatan Goswami. Once upon a time, Rupa Goswami, he was chanting the holy names Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. What is that? Saish Jivo Vivara Prasuti. That means Krishna is coming. Avatar. Nija Balabhajan Suit Sanatana Chita Vihara That Nanda Kumar, the beautiful son of Nanda Maharaj, he's the eternal friend of my heart, and he's Surat Sanatan, he's the friend of Sanatan Goswami, my Gurudev. <laughs> Nija Balabhajan, who is very dear to him. Chitta Bihara Davata. And when we chant the holy names, then Krishna Nam comes, he's the son of Nanda Maharaj himself, he does avatar and plays in your chitta. Chitta Bihara Davata. Jai Jai Sundara Nanda Kumar. So Sila Rupa Goswami was chanting the holy name and he was seeing beautiful pastimes of Radha Krishna in his heart. And he, at that time there was one old Vaishnava, Kanja Krishna Das. He was lame. He had an um, injured leg. And he was walking in a very... It was very difficult for him to walk. So he walked in a somewhat um, the comical way. And people used to laugh at him. But when he was walking past Rupa Goswami, Rupa Goswami's eyes were closed in trance. He didn't even see him. But just as he walked past Rupa Goswami, then Rupa Goswami was seeing a beautiful Hasyaras. That is Maduras, but with the, also infused with Hasyaras, with, with humor, with comedy. And Rupa Goswami began to laugh. And at that time, that Kanja Krishna does, so everyone laughs at me, oh, Today, even the great sadhu like Rupa Goswami is laughing at my misfortune. Alas, alas. So Rupa Goswami didn't see anything. He's just seeing some beautiful Leela. Pradhikrishna's Leela is very funny. Krishna is what? Vidagdo Navataronya Parihasa Visharata Nistinta Dear Lalita Sa Prayan Prayas Prayasi Vashaha he is the Dilalit Nayak, which means he's very artistic. And he's young and fresh and he's expert in laughing and joking. Once Srimati Radhika, she was in Man, in a contrary mood with Krishna. And Krishna approached her and said, Oh Srimati, why are you Kupita? Kupita means, why did you become angry? Kupita. Radhani said, I am not Kupita, you are Kupita. Kupita means angry, or it can, Ku means earth, and Pita means father. Because Radharani has heard from the Purnamasi Devi, from the people repeating the words of Gagacharya. Tasman Nandak Majo Yamte Narayana Samo Gonai. Krishna has all qualities like Lord Narayan. Radhika has heard this. So he said, oh, Why are you Kupita? I am not Kupita, you are Kupita. Kupita, you are the father of the world. We have heard, you are Kupita. Krishna said, all right, if I am Kupita, then you are Jagan Mata. Okay. <laughs> huh? you are, if I am the father of the world, you are the mother of the world. Somehow trying to persuade Radharani to give up her man and uh, accept him. 
Right? And he said, I am not Mata. You are Mata. Hmm? Mata means mother, but Mata can also be the Ma means to measure or to know. So you are Mata, you have the state of knowing everything. You are omniscience. I am not Mata, you are Mata. Everything Krishna is saying, then Radharani is sending it back to him. Why are you Kupita? I am not Kupita, you are Kupita. Then you are Jagan Mata. I am not, I am not Mata, you are Mata. Krishna said, Parihasa Keli Kala E Ananta. Parihasa Keli. Parihasa Keli means hmm, pastimes of joking. And Kala means quarrel, calling arguments. And Ananta means endless. Radharani said, Krishna said to Radharani, Are you laughing jokes and quarrels endless? Without any end? Radharani said, I am not Ananta, you are Ananta. <laughs> huh? Ananta means uh, <clears throat> unlimited. Ananta means end. Ananta, which has no end. Namo Nanta Leelaya Devaya Tuya Krishna is Ananta Leela. Kim Brahma Janma Be Ananta Katara Sasya There's unlimited Leela of Krishna, unlimited Rasa in Krishna, everything unlimited in Krishna. So his name is Ananta. And Ananta means end. Ananta without end means sometimes if a gopi is wandering in the forest, Krishna may be hiding. And from his hiding place he may jump out and catch that gopi by her claws. And then she try to stop him. But because she is not so strong and Krishna is very strong, she cannot stop him from pulling her into a kunj on the bank of Jamuna. So because Krishna is unstoppable, his name is Ananta. <laughs> unstoppable. So his name is Ananta. Krishna's name is Ananta because mm, Nam, Nam, Namaskar means to bow down. So Ta means one who has the state. So because uh, Namta means the state of bowing down. So because Krishna is Supreme Lord, Ekali Ishwa Krishna, Ara Sabha Vritya, Yari Yai Chainis Chai Setai Chi Kore Nircha, there is only one Supreme Controller, everyone dances according to his tune, all bow down to him. But because he is in the state that he does not have to bow down to anyone, his name is Ananta. Ananta. Understand? His name is Ananta. So Krishna said, Parihasa Kaliya, Kalaha, Kalahe, Ananta. Oh, are you unlimited? Is there no end to your uh, loving quarrels? Radharani said, no, you are Ananta. So Krishna took that meaning, one who does not bow down. He said, alright, if I am Ananta, then I won't be Ananta anymore. And Krishna bowed down to Radharani. <laughs> jai Jai Shri Radharani! Vagyoda keli kut ke prajaraja sunam jitvan madama dika darpa vikasa jalpam Fula birali biranal pumudiri manam stotram kadanu babad. Avaloka isya Rupa Goswami said, When will that day be there? Be mine, when I will be Rupa Manjari. I now see Radha and Krishna have a war of words with each other, and Radharani will cut all the words of Krishna and be victorious, and Krishna will bow down, and then I'll say, Jai Jai Shirai. So Rupa Goswami is chanting Harinam, seeing these things and laughing. But Kanji Krishna thought, he is laughing at me. So just as the heart of Kanji Krishna Das was broken, that even Rupa Goswami laughed at him. Then at the exact same time, the Sporti of Krishna's Leela disappeared. Sporti Bam. His meditation was broken. Rupa Goswami was chanting again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. But the, the form of Krishna, the qualities of Krishna, the leela of Krishna was not manifesting in his heart. But what happened? Rupa Goswami was very concerned about this. Now, oh, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? He went to Srila Sanatan Goswami. Oh, Gurudev, please help me. I was chanting and some by your grace, some realization was there. But since that moment, just the other day, my heart is dry and I'm not experiencing any anubhav, any realization at all. What, what can I do? Hmm? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taught to Rupa Goswami 
Yadi Vaishnava Parada Ute Hati Mata. If you commit offense to a Vaishnava, it's like a mad elephant that destroys your devotional creeper. So he was thinking, I don't remember that I've made offense to someone. Sanatan so Goswami said, Did you make offense to someone? But I don't recall that I've made offense to anyone. Sanatan so Goswami said, Perhaps unknowingly you have made an offense to someone. Then Rupa Goswami was very worried. If unknowingly I've offended someone, then how will I apologize and get their mercy so that again I can progress in my bhakti? What can I do? Sila Sanatana Swami, he was Sakar Malik, he was the Prime Minister of, in the government of Nabu Hussain Shah, he was very brilliant, a diplomat, very clever. He told Rupa Goswami, you should do this. Organize a festival of Kirtan and Harikata and Mahaprasada and send out invitations to all the Vaishnavas in Braja. And if someone does, that person who does not come, that must be the person hmm, you have offended. So then Rupa Goswami, he has only one disciple, Jiva Goswami. So he sent Jiva Goswami out with the invitations. And Srila Jiva Goswami went everywhere in Braj inviting, Please come, my Guru Dev is having a mm, Dharma Sabha, mm, Kirtan Mela, Harikatha, Sadhus who be there, Kirtan, Harikatha and Mahaprasadam. Please, mercifully attend this festival. So that he went all over Braj and distributed those invitations. The time came for the day of the festival and all the Vaishnavas came and it was very beautiful, beautiful Kirtan and Harikatha. <laughs> Afterwards, Rupa Goswami with his own hand was serving them all. And he was looking. Who is not here? Huh? He asked Jiva Goswami, you delivered all the invitations to everyone. Is there someone you gave invitation to who didn't come? He said, oh yes. That uh, Kanja Krishna does. Then Rupa Goswami thought, oh, somehow, unknowingly even, I must have offended Kanja Krishna Das. So then Rupa Goswami himself went to that Kanja Krishna Das and he fell down at his feet. Vanja Kalpataru Vesha O Prabhu, please forgive me for my offense. When Kanja Krishnada saw him, he was very sincere. And his heart is a Vaishnava, so his heart is soft. And he said to Rupa Goswami, of course, you be peaceful. Rupa Goswami, he said, it, I have not done anything knowingly, but unknowingly, did I, what offense have I made to you? Kanja Krishnada said, oh, some days before, I was walking past and I walk in a very unpeculiar way. And you began to laugh at me. Rupa Goswami said, Oh Prabhu, I didn't even see you. I was laughing because I was remembering some uh, humorous pastime of Krishna. Then Kanja Krishna Das began to tremble. And he fell at the feet of Rupa Goswami. Said, oh, I have made offense to you. Please forgive me. Vancha Kalpaturu he said, no, no, I made offense to you. No, no, I made offense to you. And they were begging forgiveness from each other. And they embraced each other with great love. And then after that, when Rupa Goswami began to chant Harinam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Again, the Ananta Lila, the unlimited pastimes, the Swayam Prakash, the self-manifested flow of pastimes, began to flow within the heart of Rupa Goswami. So Rupa Goswami has done this pastime. Why? For us. He cannot commit offense to anyone at all. It's not possible. But he has done this pastime to teach us what to speak of knowingly making an offense to another devotee. Be so careful that even unknowingly that we don't act in such a way that anyway somehow that that devotee will take offense. Because if we pinch the heart of any Vaishnava, then our own bhakti will dry up. If you want 
to have anubhav, realization, transcendental realization, then you'll have to become soft as butter. Very, very gentle and loving with all of the Vaishnavas. Otherwise, no anubhav. No, you cannot become swarup shakti and ugrahi to receive that mercy of Krishna's spiritual potency which causes the anubhav realization in the heart. So be very careful every day bow down and pray to all the Vaishnavas. And then it's possible. Otherwise, not at all. So by this pastime, Srila Rupa Goswami has given some teaching to protect us so that we'll one day have access to the Mahanidhi Kutarika. Kauna Kapata Udkarata. To the great treasure that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give. Let us and come for a moment to the writings of Rupa Goswami. How he has described bhakti is unprecedented. And how bhakti turns into bhakti rasa. Srila Rupa Goswami has said, Yathotaram aso swada visheshu lasamayapi rati Basanaya Swadvi Basate Kapi Kasyachit. It means there are five rasas Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsali, and Madhurya, and they are Yatotaram. They have increasing taste. Yatotaram, one above, uta, 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 one above the other, they have increasing taste. And that is the Vishesh Ullasamaya P. They are Vishesh Ullasamai. Each one has a particu- gives a particular type of joy which is more and more intense as you go up the rasas. So a question comes, if all the rasas were equally full joyful or joy-giving, then people would, could be attracted to any of them, or this one on that day and this one on another day. Hmm? But they're not. Some have this much ullas joy, some have this much ullas, and this much more and more ullas, bhav ullas. <laughs> so... So if they have different uh, levels of joy-giving power, then everyone should just gravitate to the highest one. But we also see that they don't do that. So why does a person become attracted to one ras and not to another? This is the question. So, Visheshwala Samaya P in the first line is, as, is raising this and giving the answer in the second half of the verse that Rati Vasanaya Swadvi Vasate Kapi Kasya Chit which means that a person will find one particular mood particularly tasteful based on rati vasana. Vasana here means the, the samskas, impressions. So, our acharyas have raised the question, what makes one attracted to one mood of love rather than another mood of love? Is it because A, a person has no impressions, B, a person has different impressions of different rasas, or C, he has impressions of only one rasa. What is it? So, in case A, if a person has no rati vasanaya, that is, no impressions of a staibhav, of a particular relationship with Krishna, that come from sadhu sangha. You see, when we sit with the rasik Vaishnavas, and we hear from their lips, the Shabda Brahma, the transcendental sound, uh, which is carrying the fragrance of Krishna's lotus feet. Yatu Tadiya Charnambur Kosh Gandam Jigranti Karna Bivarashuti Vata Nitam Bhaktyagrihita Charana Padaya Paste Nai Paisi Nata Charnambur Hat Sopumsam. It is said in Srimad Bhagavatam that Shuti Vata Nitam. The air of Harikata uh, is passing and it goes into the ears and the Vaishnavas can smell the fragrance of the Krishna's lotus feet through the nose of the ear. <laughs> the ear becomes a nose by which they can smell the fragrance of Krishna's lotus feet. Because that fragrance, Srutivata Nitam, is carried on the wind of the Vedic sound. And then, when they smell the fragrance of Krishna's lotus feet, then just like a bumblebee becomes excited. Bumblebee. They become 
completely wired. Uh, when they can smell a lotus and they go there and they just drink that honey. Mm. So the devotee becomes like that. Like a bumblebee, their heart is living and tasting the nectar of Krishna's lotus feet. But Naipasi Nata Charnamburahat Sopumsa. But Krishna, when he sees the love in the heart of the devotee, the heart of the devotee is like a lotus flower. And in Gita, Krishna said, I reciprocate. Now Krishna becomes like a bumblebee eh? and sings, Manamana Samara Karamar Payanija Pada. Not a Pada, Rit. And he becomes a bumblebee who's mad for the nectar in the heart of the devotee. So now the devotee is a bumblebee mad for the nectar in the lotus feet of Krishna. And Krishna becomes a bumblebee. He's mad for the nectar in the heart of the devotee. Eh? This is what it means to hear Harikatha. So as you are listening, then this purti of how Krishna is coming to you so lovingly, mad, madly in love with you, eh? in a particular mood, and this is called Rativasana. Understand? You experience Krishna coming towards you, and he's madly in love with you, in a particular mood. And that leaves an impression. You may see it just for a few moments in your heart while you're hearing Harikata. And it makes an impression that will not go away. That is called Rati Vasana. So if a person has no the Rati Vasanas, impressions from hearing, then they'll not be attracted to any mood. They'll not have taste. They'll not have enough taste in hearing, chanting and remembering for their bhakti to develop. Nishta, Ruchya, Sakti, Bhav. So then on the other hand, what if a person is associated with different types of Vaishnavas? Mm. They were hearing from one devotee who was telling about the glories of Lord Nishingadev. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. They heard from another devotee telling the glories of Lord Ramachandra. How his Kaikai is coming and giving the Vaikalik Vastra, giving him the, the cloth made of bark and telling him, now you can go to the forest. And everyone is crying because Lord Ram is leaving Ayodhya. And, you will see. and then on another day he's hearing about Lord Narayan. And then another day he's hearing about heroic Dwakadish, who for the sake of his loving wife, um, Satyabhama, because, you know, one day Krishna came to, sorry, Narad Muni came to Dwarka with a Parijat flower and said, Oh Krishna, you said you would give me a benediction. Yes, yes. Well, I'm ready to collect my benediction now. I want to see you present this Parajat flower to the most beloved of all your wives. <laughs> then Krishna was, oh, no. <laughs> now you've put me in a very difficult situation. So Rukmini was the, his first wife. So Krishna gave to her. Then it, it, he had plausible deniability that I had to give to her because she was the most senior. Right? Plausible deniability. So Krishna gave the Parajat flower to Satyabhama. Sorry, to Rukmini, and then Satyabhama became angry and stormed out of the palace. And she went to the Kopa Bhavan. This is Vedic culture. If a wife is upset, she cannot just have an angry face and start shouting at the husband, you know. The Vedas say, you must leave that auspicious place where a woman has an angry face. Uh, you should leave that inauspicious place. <laughs> leave at once the inauspicious place where a woman has an angry face. Even in English it rhymes. What to speak about in the Smriti Shastra. <laughs> so, in Vedic culture, the wife can go and be angry with the husband. She has to re go to the anger room in the house called the Kopa Bhavan and lie down there. Then when the husband looks around and sees, oh, where is she? Oh, she's in the Kopa Bhavan. Then he can come very humbly and say, oh, my dear wife, are you upset? How can I help you? Eh? And this, this, then it you, stops this endless quarreling. So... Everything is in Harikata, even marriage guidance. <laughs> so, then Krishna went to the Kopa Bhavan and he reached out to touch Satyabhama. Oh, my dearest. And she, like, she became like a rattlesnake. Mm -hmm. Don't call me your dearest. Mm -hmm. Then Krishna said, Oh, you upset about one Parijat flower? I gave her one. I will give you a whole tree. <laughs> a whole Parijat tree with many flowers on it. Oh, you're a liar. No, no, come with me. And then he called Garuda and he took Satyabhama to the planet of Indra. And Indra didn't want to give up his Parijat tree because it's his status symbol. <laughs> <laughs> Parijat trees are here in Swargalok in my palace in heaven. 
If the Parijat tree will go down to her earth, what will be the difference between my heaven and earth? Eh? It's like a Tesla, you know. If everyone has a Tesla, then it won't be a status symbol, right? Eh? So then Indra said, no. And then Krishna had to fight with Indra, the king of heaven. And then take the Parijat tree and bring it. And then plant it in the garden of Satyabhama. Oh. Then Satyabhama sent her maidservants out with invitations to everyone. <laughs> Please come to Salon in my palace. Mm -hmm. And all, but the real reason she invited all the queens to come is so that they can come and see she has whole Parijati tree <laughs> in her garden. But they were not bothered because they don't have Madhusneya like <laughs> she has Madhusneya, she gets jealous. The others don't have except for Lakshmana actually. But the other sixteen thousand one hundred and six wives, they don't have Madhusaya, so they don't get jealous. Anyway. So uh, but at least that gave her great satisfaction. Everyone could see that Krishna loved her so much. So someone may hear that, oh Dwakadish is so loving to the queens and this samskar. So they have samskars from Dwakadish, from Jagannath, from Nishindadev, from Lord Ramachandra, different samskars. Then when they come to do bhajan, then you go deeply into your heart. You have to look deeply into your heart that you can find the impressions that will intensify into rati bhav and turn into rasa. But because there's a mixture of impressions, then one rasa will not manifest and only rasa bas will come. Uh -huh. Yes, what's your name? Rasa, ba rasa bas will come. Hmm? So this cannot be the cause of attraction to one rasa because it will not make an intense desire for one rasa. So the answer is a person is attracted to one rasa because of impressions in one mood. And therefore, Rupa Goswami said, Swajataya Shaye Snigde. Yes. Srimad Bhagavat Athanam Aswado Rasika Kaisaha. Swajataya Shaye Snigde. Sadhu Sangha Swato Pray. One must taste the many meanings of Srimad Bhagavatam in the company of Rasik Vaishnavas. Those Rasik Vaishnavas should be in the same one mood that you aspire to attain. They should be significantly more advanced than yourself and they should have affection for you. Sne uh, sneha. But here, uh, snigda, snigde. I should be snigda. That means that you should have served them in such a way that they have made a sankalpa. Oh, you will be my kripapatra, the recipient of my mercy. This is the meaning of snigda. It's so very important. First, Vaishnav Seva. Mm -hmm. Melt the heart of that Vaishnava. Then they make that sankalpa, then associate and here, then the rati vasana, the samskars will come in one mood, and then you'll naturally be attracted. Otherwise, you'll be like many devotees, like a ship in the ocean with no compass, no rudder, and no sail, wondering where do I go in bhakti? I don't know which Krishna, what Krishna, how to serve, what mood, or anything. So, Rasik Vaishnav Sankar is very, very important. So, Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasa Mrita Sindhu describes the eligibility for Bhakti Rasa. Eligibility is Praktan Aduniki Chasti Yasya Sad Bhakti Vasana Esha Bhakti Rasa Svadas Tasseva Ridi Jayate. He said that the taste in Rasa will arise in the heart of that person who has the Yasya Sad Bhakti Vasana. The impressions of the pure bhakti, experience of pure bhakti, how? Which is praktani and adhuni. Adhuni means, adhuni means today, or now, or modern, contemporary. Eh? But here it means, here adhuni means impressions from this lifetime. Like right now, you're getting some impressions in one mood. Eh? Adhuni. But praktani. Praktani means from a previous life. So, Praktanya Duni Ki Cha Asti. The word Cha means and. In other words, it's essential. One who will experience Rasa must not only have the impressions from this life, but they must have impressions up to the stage of Rati from the last life in order to experience Rasa in this life. So, in the commentary, Jiva Goswami Pada says, Praktani. Chavasyam mrigyata 
Mrigyata means you have to search. Bhavani apadeyastu buddhena nyanya buddhina. With ananya buddhi, with ananya buddhi, one pointed concentration, you have to search deeply in your subconscious mind and find the paktan sanskars, the impressions of the rati from the last life. And that will be compounded with the impressions from this life and the impressions will be very strong and then uh, the, the rati will become rasyata, full of flavor and turn into the experience of rasa. So how this happens, Srila Rupa Goswami describes in the, his next verse. It's very beautiful, suite of verses, they're very important. He says, <coughs> we are trying, we're trying to do sadhana. In this life we're trying to do sadhana, to go through an art and every and get some nishta, some steadiness. Nishta hoil upajoy premarataranga. After nishta we start to feel some love. So, but those who are more advanced, uh, they have nishta, perhaps from the last life. And in this life, they're progressing, ruchi, asakti, they can come up to the level of rati, bhav. But even in that life, they will not experience rasa. The next life, they can experience rasa, and in their meditation, they search out the deep impressions, gada sanskar, from the previous life and this life, and they combine together. So Rupa Goswami now is going to describe those who are qualified for the experience of rasa. He said, Bhakti near dhuta doshanam prasan ujjwala chaitasam Sri Bhagavata hmm? raktanam rasika sangha ranginam The meaning is, first of all, Bhakti near dhuta, dhuta Toshanam, all the faults have already been washed away. Mm -hmm. Mm? We have many faults in our behavior and personality. So we are not qualified for bhakti rasa. But those whose dosh, faults have been washed away by the power of bhakti. So bhakti near do to doshanam. Heart is clean. And because, and because of that, they are prasanna ujjwala chaitasam. Their chitta is a prasanna ujjwala. Prasanna means very joyful. And ujjwala means shining. Hmm? So they're always happy. If you are sometimes becoming depressed, sometimes becoming cranky, sometimes becoming angry, sometimes becoming lusty, greedy, thirsty, whatever. <laughs> so that's not prasanna ujjwala. Change the <laughs> But here, these two words have a very great significance. Prasanna means the influence of Ladini Shakti, the pleasure potency. And Ujjwala, the brightness, is the Samvit Shakti. So Ladini and Samvit combined together is Shuddha Sattva Vishay Shatma Prema Surya So the heart is illuminated by a ray of the sun of Prem that is Bhav. Prasanna Ujjwala Ladini Samvit. Prasanna Ujjwala Cheta Sam. And that person is Sri Bhagavata Raktanam attached to Sri Mad Bhagavatam. Very attached. It means because of the sanskars from the previous life. Hmm? All the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam are living in the throat. Hmm? And coming out. Here and there, everywhere. So who has got the strong sanskars from the previous life? Automatically, they are called, they are called the Bhakta Bhagavat. Hmm? One is the Granta Bhagavat, the book. And the other is the devotees walking, talking, breathing, singing, dancing, Bhagavat. All Sri Mad Bhagavatam is living in the heart of that devotee and coming out again. In a flow. Hmm? So they are Bhago Sri Bhagavata Raktanam means they're attached to that. What does it say in Sri Mad Bhagavatam? Every single syllable. Hmm? Krishna Tulu Bhagavata Vibhu Savasrai Prati Shloki Prati Akri Nana Artakai. Not <laughs> every word of Sri Mad Bhagavatam, every syllable of Sri Mad Bhagavatam, they're with a the magnifying glass trying to go into that. Hmm? And understand that it's very significant. Not one meaning, but many, many meanings. Nana Artaka in each syllable of Srimad Bhagavatam. Today we were discussing earlier. Dadrishu. Why is it, this is in the perfect tense. That means that they, they could not feel any happiness before, but now they're happy. But what? <laughs> Every single syllable of Srimad Bhagavatam has the oceans and oceans of meaning. So those devotees, what do they do? Rupa Goswami is saying, Rasika Sangha Ranginam. 
they go in the association of rasiks, and there they are ranginam. Ranginam means, oh, enjoying like mad. <laughs> they enjoy so much rasik Vaishnava association. Hmm? Sitting with the rasik Vaishnavas and churning the nectar of each verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm? Venu Geet, Pranay Geet, Gopi Geet, Yugo Geet, Brahmar Geet, Viraha Geet. So, Rasika Sangha Ranginam. Once, there, was, there were two Vaishnavas. They were so attached to hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, discussing Harikata. One of them would always speak. The other one would always listen. And they would forget about time. They forgot everything. They would forget to eat and sleep even. So their wives gave them a very strict instruction. Don't go anywhere without telling us. First. Because they, after many, many hours, their wives would come and say, come, you have to go home now and eat something. It's, you've been talking for three days. Come, come and eat. Huh? So then one day, they were wandering off into the forest, wandering around Braj. They sat down beneath the Kalpa Bhritsha tree there and they were having Harikata. And many, many days passed. Long time passed. And their wives were so disturbed. Where's my husband? The other wife was, where is my husband? And after a long time, they were searching. And finally, they came in the forest and there were two skeletons sitting there in the forest. <laughs> huh? So then each wife was thinking, I have to do the, the final rituals for my husband has passed away. But there's only two skeletons. So which one's my husband and which one's your husband? <laughs> so then one of the wives said, said, well, look, your husband... He always used to speak, like to speak. He relished speaking Srimad Bhagavatam. And my husband, he always relished hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. So let's look closely. And then she looked closely at one of the skeletons. And she saw one of the skeletons had millions and millions of tiny holes in the bones. So that woman, her husband was the one who liked to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, this is my husband. Because he's hearing with his bones. Huh? Every atom of his body, he was hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, completely absorbed. So I said, this is my husband, and she did the last rites for that skeleton, and she, the other one did the last rites for that. <laughs> so Rasika Sangaranginam, to be Bhagavata Raktanam, deeply attached, that you want to hear and chant for days and nights without thinking of eating or sleeping, listening with every pore of your skin, with every bone in your body. This is Bhagavata Raktanam. A Bhagavata Vaishnav means that person who cannot live without Srimad Bhagavatam. He'll die without Srimad Bhagavatam. He is called a Mahabhagavat. But we have to say that even there are some things that you cannot even find in the Shastra. Is it true? When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was speaking with Ramananda Rai, Mapu said, explain about Sajya, the goal of life, but give Shastra Praman. And Ramananda Rai was going up and up and up and up. And he came to Anayara Aditonu Nam Bhagavan Hari Ishwara. How Krishna left all the other gopis to be with Radhika in the Rasalila. He was describing so many things. But he came to the point where he ran out of Shastra Praman. Huh? And then he said, Tumap, I don't know if it will be pleasing to you or not, but only what I can say next is my own poetry. So in Braj, they also say, Veda Rasika Kivani. What is Veda? Really Veda? Rasikavani. The instructions of the Rasiks. The words of the Rasik. Because the, the, the divine confidential Nikunja Leela of Radha and Krishna is beyond the purview of the Vedas even. Rupa Goswami himself said, Harim Madhisha Te Rajobara Pura Tha Sangyatta Muntama Prajbama Drisham Na Padati Prakata Sava Drisha Sute Rapi Rupa Goswami uh, It's evening time, like now. The sounds are there in Braj. O Saki, Leave your cooking. Krishna's returning to the village. Oh, Saki, stop te teaching poetry to the parrots. Krishna is coming. The evening time is coming. 
and gopis, whatever they're doing, they're dropping everything and they're running to their roofs and their balconies and to their, to their gates to have a glimpse of Krishna as he will come in. But before Krishna is returning to the village, then, what is pointing out that Krishna is returning? Rajobara, all the dust has risen into the air. Because he's coming with millions of cows. So before Krishna's coming, first you see all the dust rising in the forest. You can't actually see what's who's coming. So Rajobara, Purata And when he comes to the village, then the sun sets, it goes dark. And that's the time when the gopis can go and meet with Krishna. Not before then. So there are two things that allow you to see the meeting of Krishna with the gopis. Rajobara, a lot of Raja, dust, and Tama when it gets dark. So two things, Rajas and Tamas. Yeah? Only those who experience Rajas and Tamas will get to realize the sweetness of Krishna's pastimes. But the rishis and the sages, their hearts are free from Rajas and Tamas. They have a nir, Nirmala Chitta. But, Prajabhama hmm? Na Padati, those who don't follow the Padati of the Braja Gopis, then Pakata Sruti Sarva Drisha Sruterapi. Even if you are Sarva Drisha, an omniscient Rishi who knows all the mantras of all the four Vedas, you are a Chatuvedi. But still, you cannot know anything about Krishna because Krishna's divine Lila is covered by Rajobara. A lot of rajas and a lot of tamas. <laughs> Dust and darkness. Uh, it's beyond the Vedas, beyond the visions of the Rishis. It is only possible. Bama Drisham, Braja Bama Drisham, Na Padati. You follow the Padati of a Braja Gopis, then you can do it. So those who have followed Gopis, what they realize? Oh, even beyond Shastra. So, Sila Rupa Goswami part. What he has expressed, no one had expressed before. Who can express this love of Radha and Krishna. If you go to Krishna and ask him what is Radharani's love like, Krishna will say, I don't know. I can't understand Radharani's love. That's why I have to be as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> huh? If you go to Radharani and say, Can you explain to me about your love? Radharani will say, Na prema gandosti durapa me haro. Kandami so bhagya param prakasitam. Bangsi belasana na lokanam bina bibami tat prana patanga kam brita. Radharani will say, I don't know anything about love, I have no love. I have no love. Love is very far away, I don't know what love smells like even. Because when Krishna is away and I don't see his smiling face playing upon the flute, still I stay alive. Why do I stay alive? For what reason? My pran is biting me like an insect. But still I don't want to give up my pran. So the fact that I don't die in separation from Krishna proves I have no love. Akaitava Krishna Love for Krishna without cheating. In this world, it's like a Jambu Nadahim in the heavenly planets. And there's a tree on the top of Mount Sumeru. And it has Jambu fruit on it. And they're huge and they fall thousands and thousands of miles. And when they hit the ground, they burst. And the juice of the Jambu fruit makes a river. That's called the Jambu Nahat. And when the waves of this river mixed with the, uh, the, the mud on the banks, on the heavenly planets, then it dries and it becomes gold and the demigods decorate themselves. This is the most pure gold. In, in this world, the most pure gold is 24 karat gold. But this is 25 karat gold. You cannot get it anywhere in this world. 
is not available in this world. So Radharani said, pure love for Krishna is like the gold of the Jambu Nad. It's just not available in this world. And what is the proof? That if you have love and you meet, that love is so powerful that nothing can separate you. And if some Harada, the lovers are separated from each other, then they cannot stay alive, they immediately die. So when Krishna has gone, I am still alive. This is the Praman, I have no love. So then how will you find out about Radhika's brain? Krishna cannot tell you, he does not know. Radharani will deny that she has any love at all. If you go to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the mood of Radharani, so then, though he's realizing Radharani's love, he'll say, Na prema gando I don't know what love is. Then where will you go? You can go to Swarup Damadarga Swami, the incarnation of Lalita Saki. But Swarup Damadarga Swami has not written any books. In fact, in Chaitanya Tarmit, he said, of all the associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Swarup Damadar was the most learned, but no one knew because he never spoke to anyone. He was always, just consider that for a moment. He was the most learned person of all the associates, but no one knew because he didn't speak. But he used to speak with Mahaprabhu in the Gambira. And whatever mood was coming in Mahaprabhu, then all the verses of Bhagavatam and Gita Govinda, he would sing them in so many ragas. Smarati mano mama krito parihasam harim hiya bito vilasam Smarati mano mama He's singing the song you can see in Chaitanya Tarvita Geet Govinda So, so Sor Damodar will not tell you anything Go to Ramananda Rai This is a little bit better He's written one book Jagannath Balab Natakam and he's described something about the Purvarag of Radha Krishna and their meeting. But he has not openly described the beautiful Nikonji Lila or the service of the Manjuris there. So then from whom can you know? Only from Rupa Goswami Pad. So my Gurudev used to say the speciality the Vaishishta of Rupa Goswami Pad is that he is Vachal. Vachal means talkative. Rupa Goswami's speciality is Vachal. He's talkative. What no one else has said, Rupa Goswami has said. Yes, Yankarandita Sirastara Tavamana Bhangi. Very beautiful services of the maid servants of Radhika, who are realizing Radhika's love. My Gurudev used to say, if you follow the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu of Rupa Goswami, but still you will not be Rupa Nuga. Why? Because there he has described all the moods. Dasya Sakya Vatsalya. Only touch Madhuriya. Then someone will say, but if I follow Ujwala Nilamani, then I'll be Rupanuga. No. Because there, he has described 360 different moods of heroines. Radharani's moods manifested in 360 different types of heroines. But he's not elaborately described his own mood. But when you follow Gandharavasan Pratanastakam, Chakupuspanjali, Karapanya Panjika Stotram, and especially the swan song of Rupa Goswami, Utkali Kavallari, Oh, then you can become Rupa Nuga. Because only in those poems, Srila Rupa Goswami expressed his own mood. Therefore, two things are here, Rupa Goswami is saying, Sri Bhagavata Raktanam Rasika Sangha Ranginam One is to be attached to Bhagavatam, but also relishing the Rasikavani, which even... It's the, it's the expansion of the Dwani of the Bhagavatam. But it, you cannot see it directly without their association. The Rasik Vaishnavas are explaining and revealing the confidential things related to your Sambandha that you want to attain in your spiritual life. So then, Rupa Goswami, he is describing now what the stages you have to go through, the qualification of a person who will realize Bhakti Rasa. So now Rupa Goswami, he's saying... Jivani Bhuta Govinda Pada Bhakti Sukasriyam Premantaranga Bhutani Krittani Eva Vatishtatam The meaning is this person his whole life is dedicated to a treasure and that treasure is the joy that he feels in the service of the lotus feet of Govinda Dev. Divyad Pandaranya Kalpa Drumadas 
श्रीमद्रत्नागरसिंहासनस्थ श्री श्री राधा भक्ति हियरिंग चैंटिंग रिमेम्बरिंग सर्विंग हियर कृतवानी मीन्स ऊ द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ भक्ति ऊ द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ सर्विस टू द डेटी टू द वैष्णवर्स वेर द प्लेजर ऑफ गोविंद देव इज द सेंटर ऑफ एवरीथिंग देन भक्तानम रिडी राजंती संस्कार युगोलुज्वला रति आनंद रूपएवा niyamana tu rasyatam now actually up to that verse the description of the sadhana is complete uh, the the anustitam anustitam means that means the sadhana the the practice of sadhana is complete up to there now he is describing how the devotee experiences rasa so there are two things rasa and sahai Ra, the, sorry sadhana and sahai sadhana means the practice that you do and then sahai means the assistant what is the assistant or the helper to relishing bhakti rasa mm-hmm. so of these four verses the first two the, have completed the sadhana <coughs> the life of the devotee mm-hmm. now the next two verses are describing the sahai mm-hmm. the assistant to the sadhana by which bhakti rasa is experienced so what is the sahai mm-hmm. here it is said sanskara yugulu jwala you sanskara yugul two types of samskars and they are praktan and adunik aduniki praktani and aduniki so the devotee is doing magyata searching out in the core of his heart the impressions of vaishnava association in this life and going deeply and that's compounded by the impressions from the previous life and then what happens krishna dibir dibava dhyay गथा अनुभवध्वनि प्रौदानंद चमत्कार कष्टम आपाद्यते परम द डीप इंप्रेशंस आर राइजिंग अप एंड ही इज बिगिनिंग टू एक्सपीरियंस द रति हिज ओन पर्टिकुलर रिलेशन विद कृष्णा देन विभाव द थिंग्स व्हिच स्टिमुलेट दैट रिलेशन द विभाव अलंबन एंड उदीपन and among the alamban ashray lamban vibhava and uh, vishay lamban ashray lamban these are some technical terms if you know some rasa that way you can understand and the the anubhav the sattvika bhavs and the vyabhachari bhavs all the ingredients are rising in his heart and but for it to go to rasa he needs the sahai the help of another life some scars and more should the sattva comes and then these ingredients mix together and his rati becomes rasita extremely relishable and then gradually gradually pravadananda he gets a very mature bliss pravada eh? pravadananda chamatkara and ah, he's in a total state of astonishment kastam apadyate param and attains paramakasta the highest state of joy so this is the way the bhav turns into rasa rupa goswami has described it so beautifully how can we imagine hmm? no one can imagine but rupa goswami for example let's take an example if the devotee is realizing in his heart the vibhav so vibhav means that which stimulates your love so prominently that means the ashray alamban and vishay alamban the object of love and the abode of love for him krishna and radhika hmm? so if a person in their chanting from the sportis of so coming from association of pure vaishnavas <coughs> they begin to experience krishna how is krishna krishna is very eagerly wandering through the forest of vrindavan looking here and there ah oh, perhaps i'll meet some gopi here today perhaps i can meet with radhika here today huh? then suddenly he sees esha nantika vartini suragile ila vitahantabu agri kim kalyani kanchana rucham udgara gauri disha अंगीज 
Have I come into the valley of the um, Sumeru mountain called Ilavritavash? You know, there's a place called Ilavrita. And Ilavrita, everything there is golden because it's bathed when the, the rays of the sun shine off Sumer golden mountain. Then the whole forest becomes golden. And Krishna is suddenly, he thinks I've wandered into Ilavritavash. So here comes the sanctuary baths. What is the sanctuary bath here? Tarka. He's, tarka is when you're arguing with yourself. Where am I? Am I here? Am I there? So Krishna's thinking, D did I come to Ilavritavash? Everything is golden here. But then he argues with himself, no, I haven't come in Ilavritavash. Why? Because he's feeling very amorous attraction. He's calm. He's intensified by this golden effulgence. And the thing about Ilavritavash is, if anyone enters into Ilavritavash because of the curse of Lord Shiva, they turn into a woman. Right? So at first Krishna thought, have I come to Ilavritavash? And then he could feel his whole body feeling ecstatic, amorous attraction to someone. And then he realized, oh no, I'm still a man. So I cannot be in Ilavritavash. <laughs> this is the Dwani. <laughs> so then he says, Amgyatam. Oh yes, Amgyatam is, yes, I know. I'm not in an Angyatam. Yes, I know. I'm not in Ilavritavash. What is this? Angyatam maninu pradwanibaram. I can hear a sweet sound of ankle bells. Hmm? So this golden light must be coming from a golden complexion woman. Who could it be? Huh? Angyatam. Yes, I know. Kantinam paradevata vilasatum brindata vibindati. It must be that today the goddess of Kanti the goddess of effulgence has come wandering in the forest of Vrindavan. But what is this? Krishna's doing these sanctuary bhavs are coming, Tarka Vitarka, arguing with himself. He's seen Radhika many times. He's seen the effulgence of Radhika many times. But today he's seen the effulgence of Radhika, he doesn't recognize her. Why? Even though Radha Krishna are meeting together and enjoying their pastimes with no beginning and no end forever, but when they meet each other, their praying is so intense that they don't recognize each other. Kobala, who is that boy? Who is that girl? Because that is the meaning of Madhurya. Madhurya means Sarva Manoharam. It steals your mind. It does buddhi nash, destroys your buddhi. Your vivek nash, discrimination is lost. You cannot understand who is this person. Hmm? And then Krishna sees Radhika. Hmm? When Radhika uh, is approaching uh, Krishna, then even though she is very eager to see him, then man comes in her heart. So this is a stai bar. Tringarayani bhavitim bhavisariyani when will I decorate Radhika beautifully from head to toe and bring her through the forest to meet with Krishna? But then when she's just approaching him, she gets all in man and turns around and starts walking away. Then I'll grab her by the veil and start pulling her towards Krishna. And she'll shake a finger at me and fill my ears with the nectar of her abuse. Let go of me. I'm not a loose woman like you. I'm going home. <laughs> huh? yes. Oh, with nectar in the ears. <laughs> but then that manju will bring Radhika very close to Krishna. And when Krishna sees Radhika, then all at once, he's standing in tree banga form. Look, there. he's just meeting with Radhika right here. And what does he do? Krishna goes in tree banga form. The Shtubanga form is a, mm, means Lalit Bhav. There are 20 Bhav Alankas. Now we're discussing the Rasa Samagris. So here is Anubhav. Among the Anubhavs, there are Vachik Anubhavs and Kaikamana Bhavs. That means reactions in the body, in, in, in the mind, in the words. So one of the, um, the bodily, the Bhav Alankas, one of the ecstatic Bhav uh, decorations of Bhav, ornaments of Bhav, is called Lalit. So when Radhika is really eager to meet with Krishna, she just can't help it, but her head goes on one side, and her hip sticks out, and she crosses her feet, and her eyebrows move. This is called Lalit Bhav. So when Krishna remembers or thinks of the sweetness of Radhika when she's really, really eager to embrace him, but she's holding herself back, 
Then Krishna himself becomes bewildered and he, he stands like this and moves his eyebrows. And so this is called Lalita. Lalita Madhava Bame Brishabano Kanya Nila Vasana Gauri Rupi Gone Danya. Krishna Lalipap comes, he's so crooked. Like this. Huh? Then the gopis say, Hari Saki Hari Venu Barabahuya Yukta Girivara Daratopi Prakshaniya Sakibi Haririya Saralanga Shri Giri Dharanepi Yadi Kalakil Venu Sandrito Vakrimapaha Look at Krishna. I think that this flute must be very heavy. Because when he was lifting Govardhan Hill, he was standing up straight. But when he picks up his flute, <laughs> so his flute must be very heavy. Hmm? Why is Krishna's flute so heavy? Venu gite take radhe kunnam esho esho radhe tako esha. Flute is heavy because rather Nam is coming from the flute. Mm-hmm. So then he becomes Tribanga. Mm-hmm. Krishna wants to speak with Radhika, but she's become all okay. she's overwhelmed. And man, that is the Kutalya Abbas. That is the, the semblance of crookedness comes from her pranai. She has so much deep love with Krishna. She feels such wonder, some confidence. She thinks even if I criticize and abuse him, he cannot give me up. So the, the man is coming on the basis of pranai. Kutali Abbas. So then Radharani looks at Krishna and says, You Vakrishwa. Because you Vakrishwa, you are crooked Krishna in three places. How are you crooked in three places? Ado, Madhye, Chante, Bangsika, Rasika. When you play your flute, you are crooked in three places. You are crooked in the past, the present, and the future. <laughs> you are crooked in the beginning, the middle, and the end of everything. So I think that you are like Vakrashra. Because Vakrashra is, Vakrashri is uh, one deity of Lord Shiva. And uh, it means the Lord of Vakra, crookedness. So Vakrashra, Lord Shiva destroys the universe. So Radharani, she says, Kalakrita, ja- um, um, Kalakrita Jagati Pralaya. Hey Krishna, when you play your flute, just as Lord Shiva, Vakrashra destroys the universe. So you also destroy the whole universe. <laughs> hmm? The universe is one way, after you play your flute, it becomes another way. Right? Everything becomes astavyasta. Everything is misplaced everywhere. Kastranga teikala daya Kastranga teikala padaya tavenu gita. Sanmorya arya chalitam charitam na chaletrilokyam. Trilokya sobagamidam chane riksha rupam. Yad go dvija drumam rgan pulakanya pipram. Gopis have said, Oh, what religious woman, upon hearing the sound of your flute and seeing your beauty, will not deviate from the Arya path, from the path of the Aryan life and from the Vedas? Hmm? But not only the uh, women of the universe, but even the cows, they only know eating. When you play your flute, they give up their dharma of eating. The birds know fluttering around here and there. When they hear your flute, they give up their restless dharma and sit like meditating like sages. The deer, uh, their dharma is to be shy, but when you play your flute, with giving up their shyness, they come out of the forest and approach you. Uh, so everyone gives up your dhar- their dharma. All dharma is destroyed when you play your flute. So Krishna, you are Vakrashra, you are crooked in three places, past, present, future, beginning, middle and end, and you destroy the whole universe by your flute playing. So this way Radharani is giving a very good insult to Krishna. Uh, but what's the nature of love? Stotram yatra tastatam prakatayat chitya siddhate vatam ninda api pramadam prayatati pariha sasriyam vibhati. Pray me such that if you speak some nice compliment to the person, the person becomes upset thinking, what's wrong? What did I do wrong? Huh? Pray makes everything backwards. Huh? It's the nature of praying. Deko me sunaye eka bhatta aname brahma nirakar rahyo. Gokala make it. Nanda Yashoda Kiga Prima Nadia Kisada Ulta Bahida. Oh, look, I'll tell you something which is a complete mismatch. What is that? 
Oh, that Nivishes Niraka Brahma that all the sages are meditating on, if you look closely, he's a coward boy, he's playing in Goku. Huh? I'm very attached to his devotees. Nanda Yashoda Kinga, Prema Nadiyaki Sada Uta Who can cross over the river of love? Because it flows in such a way that it turns everything upside down. So Radharani is saying, criticizing Krishna. But Ninda Api Pramadam Pratsiti Pariya Sasriyam Vibrati, when the lover and beloved they insult each other, then they become very happy. And they feel a great treasure of joy in their heart from those Ninda, from that Ninda. Ninda Api Pramadam Pratsiti Pariya Sasriyam Rupa Goswami. I am quoting all these words, this is Rupa Goswami. Yankali Rupa Sharinana Dharata Thambraja Prema Mahani Kutrika. He opened the treasure. So then when Radharani insulted Krishna, then for the pleasure of Radharani, Krishna will insult Radharani also. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, you have called, you have said that I am Vakrasura, so you, if I am Vakrasura, you are Astavakra Rishi. Yeah. Vakrasura is crooked in three places, but Astavakra Rishi is crooked in eight places. Vachi kacha bruvi dristo smite prayane avaguntane ridicha. Astava Kriyatam Bande. <laughs> I bow down to Astava Krishi. You are Astava Krishi. You are crooked in eight places, not three. Hmm? First of all, you are crooked in hmm? Vachi. Your words are crooked. Why? Because Radharani loves Krishna, but when she sees him, then what does she do? She's insulting him. So Vachi, your words are crooked. Vachi Kache. Kachi means your hair. Radharani's hair is tied in a tight veiny. But in the Nikunjas, overwhelmed in ecstasy when Radhika has sattvic baths, then her veiny comes open and and her hair becomes like a mass of curls, like a clouds in the monsoon season. So, Vachi Kachi, your hair is crooked. Curling, curling, curling. Vachi Kachi, Bruvi, your eyebrows are crooked. If a woman has very, very long, long eyebrows and also curving like that, then very beautiful. So Radhika is mm, bruvi. Your eyebrows are crooked. Mm? And mm, dristi, your glance is crooked because Radhika never looks directly at Krishna. She's always <laughs> looking. Kataksh. Kadakarisha siyamam kripa kataksha bhajanam. It's the, this Anubhav. We're discussing rasa. How all the ingredients of rasa come in the heart? Why does someone look from the side? Eh? Because if someone has a very steady chitta, like a rishi, then they can look at the tip of the nose and focus there, like that. But if someone's chitta is tarangit, with waves of emotion, then the eyes dart from side to side. Eh? They become restless, like the chakitacharumuru uh, netra. Like a deer, you know, deer has very big eyes, and if they're in the forest, and if they're startled, then the eyes go like that. And it's because the heart is tarangit. So these are the anubhavs. Hmm? So Krishna said, your words are crooked, your eyebrows are crooked, your hair is crooked, your uh, glance is crooked. Then, hmm, smite, your smile is crooked. Because Radharani is trying to not smile at him, but she cannot stop it. So she's trying to have a straight face, but a little <laughs> smile is coming. Your smile is crooked. And smite prayane, the way that you move is crooked also. Radharani's name is Gajagamani. means who walks like an elephant. You see elephant, they're very big. If you look at the elephant from behind, when they step with one foot, then the whole body swings this way, and then they step with the other, and the whole body swings that way. <laughs> and then they step with the other foot, and the whole body swings. So Radharani is the... Nakru Nitambini Gamanagalambana. Radhika has very broad hips and as she walks they're moving from side to side. So prayane, the way you walk is crooked. Avagante, hmm? and you, that means your veil, because Radhika's veil is very fine and always in waves. So your veil is crooked and the last one, Riddhi, your heart is crooked. Heart of Radhika is crooked. Why? Aheri Vagati Premna Sobhava Kukila Bhavet. It is the nature of young couples when they meet that the prey, their love moves like in a crooked way like a snake. So they always become upset with each other for no reason. 
or sometimes with a reason and sometimes without a reason. Due to my... So Krishna said, so, I bow down to you, you are Astavakra, you are cooking in eight places. Huh? So, this is Rupa Goswami's poetry, I'm just quoting Rupa Goswami's poetry. poetry. Huh? But what you should know about poetry, Kavya Purush, that means the personality of poetry is a person. So the body of the Kavya Purush is made of words and their meanings. And then the ornaments on the Kavya Purush are the the alankars, the figures of speech. Hmm? So you have metaphors, onomatopoeia, similes, and so on. And then, the Kavya Purush has pran. So the pran of the Kavya Purush is? Twani. Twani. And what's the atma of the Kavya Purush? Prasa. Prasa. Prasa I was asking you. I thought you were looking at me. Uh, okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, the, the, the Dwani, the nectar is there in the Dwani in Rupa Goswami's poetry. So, though these are the words of Rupa Goswami's poetry, but what is the Dwani? Dwani means the suggestion. Like if there's a bell, and you hit the bell, dong, it makes a sound, but then it goes, mong, mong, and there are waves of sound. So, in the same way, when the poem hits your heart, that's the meaning of the words. But the Dwani is the waves of realization that come afterwards, they are the suggestions within the poem. So the Dwani of this poem is, Oh, Radhika, you are like Astavaka Rishi. is quite ugly, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but you are like Astavakri. This is a discussion of, the Dwani here is, Radhika, you are so beautiful. Because only a woman who walks in a crooked way, who glances in a crooked way due to anubhavs, whose hair is beautifully curling, whose eyebrows are curling, and so on. They, so the Dwani of this is, Oh, he wants to say, oh Radhika, you are so beautiful. But because of her brain vilas, the nature of brain in the heart, everything is coming out backwards. The river of love makes everything upside down. So then we have Anubhav. Here's another Anubhav here. Ukti Pratyukti. Ukti Pratyukti means giving an, uh, 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 saying something and getting a reply, and giving a reply to that and giving it quickly. Radha Krishna answering each other back and forth. Ukti Pratyukti is another Anubhav. So the Rasa Samagris, the ingredients of Rasa are appearing. And the devotee who has the deep samskars, he can experience and relish it. Hmm? So Ukti Pratyukti. So this is the Dwani. Krishna really means to say, Oh Radhika, today you look so beautiful. But what does he say? You're like Astavarsakariski, very ugly Rishi. But Radhika can feel the Dwani because Radhika is Rasik. Krishna is Rasik, Radhika is Rasik. Without Radhika, Krishna would not be Rasik actually. He would be Vairasik without any Rasa at all. Hmm? It's like, uh, Krishna is like sugar cane juice. So, sorry, Krishna is like sugar cane. If you want to taste the juice, you have to put it through the, the grinding machine. Hmm? So when Krishna goes through the grinding machine of Radharani's man, then the Ras comes out of Krishna. Otherwise, there's no Ras in Krishna. <laughs> So, this is one Dwani. But then, if poetry is very beautiful, Rupa Goswami's poetry has not only Dwani, but Anu Dwani. The next level of suggestion. Dwani, Anu Dwani. So, the next level of suggestion is that <coughs> because Krishna's love is so intense, that's why he's doing the Ukti Pratyukti. If he wasn't feeling the Anubhavs, the reactions to Radhika's love, then he would not be speaking fast with all of this uh, uh, beautiful poetry. So the first Dwani is, oh, Krish, Radhika, you are beautiful. And secondly, the insult, Nindapi Pramadam Prayatati. The insult is also the sign of love. Prema Swarasikasya Kasyati Dayam Vikridati Prakriya. Paul Namasi Devi said that it is the play of love that it causes the lovers to insult each other. So one, Radhika, you are beautiful. And two, I am very much in love with you. And then, Dwani, Anu Dwani, and then Prati Dwani. The next level of Dwani in the poetry of Rupa Goswami. Very, very deep. Only the Param Rasik Vaishnavas can enter into it. The next level is very confidential. I shouldn't even say <laughs> but it's Rupa Goswami's day I may become Vachala <laughs> 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 
The next level is this. Radhika said to Krishna, you are Vakrasra. Hmm? So Vakrasra is a deity of Lord Shiva. Hmm? It's one, a Shivling. Hmm? So Vakrasra is a Shivling, a deity of Lord Shiva. And Astavaka Rishi is a Rishi who attained, he became a Siddha because he was a Upasaka of Lord Shiva. <laughs> So when when Krishna when she said you are Vakrasha, Krishna said you are Astavakarishi, the Pratidwani is just as Astavakarishi became the Siddha by becoming becoming the Upasaka, the worshipper of Vakrasha. If I am Vakrasha, then Radhika, your life will become a Siddha. Perfect if you worship me. <laughs> this is the Pratidwani. <laughs> so in this way, Sila Rupa Goswami. We cannot touch his glories. He has written hundreds and hundreds of beautiful poems. Uh, and by hearing these poems, those who have these sanskars, they will experience the Stai Bhav, Vibhav, Anubhav, Sattvika Bhav, Vyabhachari Bhav. And it will turn, it will, they will mix together on the, and Rati will become extremely relishable and it will turn into Rasa. So, even though Many incarnations and many acharyas came to this world and gave bhakti. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave bhakti rasa and he did it through Srila Rupa Goswami. Srila Rupa Goswami Pari! Yeah.